Hello folks and welcome to another pre-modern video. It's time for the showdown. We're going to be playing in the 16 person single elimination event and this is going to be the people who qualify for this uh, have been doing well over multiple leagues so usually the let's say that the competitivity is, is that even a word uh, the, the competition is more steep in these kind of events than in your regular leagues so for that reason we're going to be playing uh, an interesting version of uh, the, the the land destruction terrible oath druids deck however you want to call this deck this is going to be the mirror breaker <laughs> this is the idea be behind this uh, building the deck in this way uh, basically as soon as i built the red green deck and i did well I went on a Spike Colony with Mike Flores because Lani wasn't around and I talked about the possibility of building this specific shell in order to beat the mirror because this card is very much a mirror breaker and so is this little number right here. So uh, this deck is built as a way to be advantaged in the mirror at the cost of a couple of things that we're going to go over right now. The very first thing is that we are going to lose some percentage points against specifically elves and goblins. The reason for that is that Pyroclasm is ridiculous against those decks and Source to Plowshares is just fine. And that's like kind of a pretty big difference, uh, notably against goblins where, you know, this is something that I have done on like just multiple times on, on this this channel where my opponent goes strong and lucky and they connect and they put a Siege Gang into play and it's just like I just shrug and I just Pyroclasm their entire board away. Well, you cannot do that anymore, you know? So if you have, you know, if you top deck the Source of Plowshares or turn two or you don't have your white source on turn one to kill the lucky, you're just going to die to that lucky really quickly. So... That is a pretty big disadvantage in that specific matchup. The same is true for Elves, where your opponent is going to start to go wild or maybe even like Resolve the Quick, Drench Hermit or whatever. And you cannot just untap and power class and everything, right? Like you, you need to make sure that you kill, that you have the Swords of Plowshares at a very more, uh, in a much more time sensitive range. You, you, you cannot just top deck it and it bail you out. It's much more narrow than, than that in that sense. Obviously we do gain some percentage points against a deck like Shrimp and we do of course gain some percentage points in the mirror. So that's kind of the idea behind uh, building this deck. One thing that you will note uh, however is that in the, you know, we can play stuff like Shivan Oasis, we can play stuff like uh, the Filter Lands in the red green version because we're playing in Pyroclasm, which we are aiming to cast on turn two. That's not true for the reasons that I just stated, it's not true uh, in, in with white. So because of that, I'm playing the fourth copy of Mox Diamond as an extra white source that I can play on turn one when I'm on the draw against the Goblin Lackey. So that's like the reason why I, I'm going back to four Mox Diamonds. There's no other land in the format besides um, there's like Vec something this one right here. So that is that is the idea uh, that the way we have four Mox Diamonds. I have been on three and I've been pretty happy having three Mox Diamonds uh, instead of four. Having more lands matters more in my opinion than having more Mox Diamonds the vast majority of times. Though of course you have a bunch of uh, powerful two drops and being able to cast them on turn one matters a lot but it's a, mostly a matter of preference. But both three or four Mox Diamonds are very defensible. I think two is one too little. Uh, what we do have though is like in order to make room for the four copies of War Plushers, I had to cut down on the fourth copy of Winter's Grasp, which I feel like it's fine, especially because Winter's Grasp is pretty bad, specifically against Shrimps and against uh, decks like Roatog. And one thing that I wanted to do when building this deck was make sure that I have a game plan for the matchups where I just want to cut all of my LD and have, just make sure that I have enough cards to bring in post sideboard. So let's go over the sideboard then. We have Seal of Cleansing, Ray of Revelation, again like Mirror Breakers style cards, and then some extra copies of Naturalize and Crumble just to do stuff on the cheap. Uh, notice that you know I could be playing an extra copy of Naturalize, so that is uh, mostly because one mana can be a big difference when your opponent is swinging for 12 and they have daces and stuff, so that's the idea for that split. Uh, we also have Enlightened Tutor and Argivian Fine. These are like my two go-to cards when I want Something that's good, that that gets me the cards that are good, I mean, just round out my cyborging. So we can bring in E-Tutor and Argivian Find against a deck like uh, like Blue-White Dreadnought because that allows us to like tutor and get back our Seal of Cleansing or stuff like that. Same is true against um, a deck like Elves where, you know, we have Dueling Grounds in the cyborg, which I'm not super stoked about this card 
but it feels like the only thing that this color combination can do against uh, goblins or elves once they have gone wide. So we're going to be trying it out. This is a tech by, um, I can't remember the name, but like somebody in the Oath Discord, which actually played this deck in an event and they posted the deck list where they were playing a couple of copies of Dueling Grounds, which I thought, yuck. But at the same time, I went in a Scryfall search and I, there's literally nothing else in green and white colors that we can play. Sure, there's like Wrath of God and stuff like that. I, I cannot support double white. So Cataclysm in the other versions of this deck does the job. It, it does that catch up mechanism a job for the deck but we don't have access to white white cards so dually grounds is quite literally the best thing we can do so uh, we pair that alongside the curse totem and hopefully we're not gonna be feeling like those uh, pyroclasms are gonna be you know not having pyroclasms is gonna be the end of the world then we have like some other classic cards like call of the herd and suranorva just fantastic cards in, in the cyber of this deck, it allows the deck to pivot and to change switch gears, especially in matchups where you're cutting Oath of Druids specifically. So that's pretty nice. And that's going to be the deck that we're going to be playing. So hopefully this little intro made sense and hopefully you will enjoy this one. Uh, if you do, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And if you don't, womp womp. <laughs> All right, uh, let's play round number one, shall we? Okay, here we go. This is going to be the first round of the showdown. This hand... Kind of sketchy, like we really need a green source in the first two turns. So I think I'm gonna ship it. It's much better, much, much better. So I think I'm gonna bottom the oh man, this is actually very close. Like, I'm obviously keeping, but do I want to keep the factory? Or do I want to keep the wasteland? Huh, I'll, actually, I could also just bottom the source to plowshares. Huh, <laughs> this is actually super interesting. Like, I feel like every single like this is a very key decision, super key decision. So I think the things I could bottom are one two or three i feel like all of these three i want to keep and that's crazy uh, okay i think i'm gonna bottom the factory because we already have treetop village as a threat let's see what we're up against basic island black bodies okay so i guess i should have bottomed the source of plowshares huh looking like we're playing against stasis playing the library on turn two because i just want to get that going very happy that i kept the wasteland now another island can i deal to these black bodies here this feels like a Pretty bad matchup for us, for this version of the deck at least. Mox time and Spear of Resistance, kind of like all of these. So I think I'm just going to pay for everything. Um, let's play a Mox, Pigeon, a Windswept Heath. Play a Fetch Land because I want to hide the Wasteland for now. And I could swing with Trick of Village to prevent my opponent from using their mana. Because otherwise they can just counterspell my Spear, which would be pretty sad. Alternatively, I can just pass the turn or just drop a Terrorbore. Actually, let's just play a Terrorbore. Just a 1-1. Just one, one. But there is some value in just emptying my hand here. Another island. And we're going to see the stasis coming down. Yep, there it is. So now, priority number one is to make sure we hit all of our land drops. That's not a good draw. <laughs> None of these are good draws, actually. So bottom, all of these. I'm still going to hold on to the wasteland here. Just going to ship the turn back. We're in pretty bad shape here. So we're definitely going to be shuffling to look at some fresh cards get my planes and untap i guess untap is a way of saying <laughs> untap is just an expression okay so we had some stuff happening here so let's play factory ship the turn back at one point i'm going to want to play this fear of resistance i think chain of vapor my library okay that's fine so now i cancel and now their stasis dies i don't understand that play that seems very good for me. I also know I'm drawing a Tree Top Village. That's the first Satan CD, which I'm just going to Wasteland. Um, so let's play Mox Diamond, Peachy in the Street Top Village, play Wasteland, Wasteland for Satan CD, one in Flow, it's a blue mana, Chain of Aver, my Terrorvore. Perfectly acceptable. We're not going to sacrifice a land. So that gets destroyed. Uh, I think I'd rather resolve this Terrorvore now and this Sphere of Resistance. I put it can Thwart. Okay, they gush. Seems fine to me. They can, now they can't thwart and they can't daze either. Foil my sphere. Okay, ship the turn back. I mean, I, I am tapped low here, so if they have a second stasis, that would be a little bit annoying. No second stasis is good for me though. Black Vice does nothing. I'm gonna play this library here, which resolves. And I'm just going to swing for six, down to 14. Gosh, do they have second stasis? They already played the land drop, so now I'm looking pretty good. Having two dead cards in hand is not great. Winter's Grasp is actually kind of nice. So let's put Mox Diamond on top. 
And I think I want to put treetop on top. Let's Winter's Grasp the land. They can daze this, whatever. Sets them back a turn, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So yeah, that's fine. Not pay for days. Smoke to the beginning of combat. Still not attacking with my lands. Should be turned back. Maybe I should have paid four last turn actually to put another treetop village in play, which would have allowed me to present lethal through uh, through multiple ways. Treetop village. <laughs> I think I just go to one. Play Mox Diamond, make this into a 7-7. I guess there's you no know, upside to doing that, so maybe I don't have to. It's like I'm still swinging for lethal. So put Mox on top, put Tree Top on top, and we're gonna percent lethal, and then tap my opponent on their upkeep. Chain of Vapor number three. No sacrifice a land. Swing for two. And now we're going to play a Terror War and play out the port. Now the question is, let's assume my opponent has forgotten City better. Yeah, it's probably better to just port them on upkeep here. So port, port the island, gush in response. You got it. And this is their upkeep, so I think we just win now. All right, cool. I'll take it. So we want that. We want these. We definitely want these. Suranorv as well. Cut the source of flourishers. Cut the oath of druids. Maybe we want call of the herd. Library is fantastic. The LD is like medium. Sometimes, as we just saw, it's just kind of fine to get your LD just this simply so that you can set your opponent back as well. As is, what's my worst? What are my worst cards here? Probably Winter's Grasp. So the question is, are the Grasp worse or better than Call of the Herd? Let's do one and one. Definitely very exciting to win game number one, even after drawing two dead cards. I feel like we got very lucky there. Uh, this hand seems, this seems fine. It's a slow hand, but he has a couple of the things that we're actually looking for. Uh, Terrorbore, not fantastic, not terrible. Land go for my opponent, <laughs> another Terrorbore. Still not fantastic, still not terrible. Actually, it is kind of terrible. Would have loved to have drawn a two drop there. Forsaken CD, I think. Ooh, okay, so this allows me to play around Counterspell. So let's play a land. We're gonna fetch for a forest, and then I'm gonna attempt to Winter's Grasp the Forsaken CD. My opponent counters it, okay. Okay, they do Counterspell. So now we are through a counter spell, opponent gushes, pretty good for them. If this stays is now, it's kind of a big problem, but we're not super dead. I can just wasteland the Forsaken City. Like I, I'm, I wish I were a little bit more ahead, but it's not the end of the world. I'm going to hold on to this Street of Village because obviously it doesn't do much in the face of stasis. And I'm also interested in being able to enable a future Mox Diamond if it comes down to that. <laughs> Terror War number three, not, not where I want to be. Okay, this game's not looking great. Opponent continues to hit their land drops. Big yikes. I really want to dodge some gushes. My opponent hitting the land drops is pretty bad for me. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a damn good draw. That's a damn good draw. Uh, actually, I do get blown out. So I guess the way to do this is to ship the turn back. Because if my opponent has Chain of Vapor, then I just get blown out. So the way to do this is to wait. My opponent's probably going to Chain of Vapor on instead they don't. So now they have to pay for upkeep. And now, whatever they play, I just... If they play another item, I just tap it on their turn. Which means they're not going to be able to bounce their thing. I mean, if they do, they have to bounce it on the turn. And then they just get a full untap. Forsaken City is terrible for me. Yeah, that's the one thing that <laughs> I couldn't afford for them to draw. Gross. Play out my treetops. They go... Oh, that's brutal. So now I need to draw specifically Wasteland. They pitched a oh, null. No. I guess there are other things I can draw here. I can just draw Gush. Brutal. Yeah, Gush is just devastating there. They do discard a couple of lands, but I mean, I can't just draw a Wasteland and then we're in it. They discard Impulse and Thwart. Yeah, this is rough now. That was the window. That was like the one turn window where I had to dodge. So now my opponent's actually going to start getting ahead on mana here. So this port is not going to be relevant any longer. We can just draw a Wasteland, and then my opponent can't get ahead on mana anymore. Or <laughs> Gibeon, fine. Not great. Send the turn back again, setting up a potential Mox Diamond by holding on to the Treetop Village. <laughs> sphere of Resistance. Yeah, I'm just going to discard one of these Terror Wars here. Maybe I'll just discard a Sphere. We can get it back with our Gibeon find if we wanted to. Black Vice. So I think I crumble on end step. They do Thwart. That sucks. It's going to take two now. Another Sphere. Yeah, not where we want to be. It could just play a sphere, but it's gonna get days. I think now we may be a little bit too far behind. There was that little one turn window there where I could have gotten away. I could have gotten around the stasis, but my opponent just had 
the Forsaken City, unfortunately, for me. Uh, guess I ship the turn back now. So if I draw Mox Diamond... Oh no, I still need to find... Yeah, I'm just dead. I just don't have enough. So I still need to... I was thinking Rare of Revelation can potentially get me out of this, but I don't think it does it. Okay, so on the play, I think I like Winter's Grasp better than Call of the Herd. And everything else should stay largely the same. This is one of the matchups that I think is a little bit of a wash, whether we are doing better or worse. Like, Rare of Revelation is obviously fantastic, but... Uh, you know, having access to a card like um, Pyroblast is quite good as well. I think I'm going to keep this hand. So let's lead on my lands that enter tapped. Picked up village number two. Ship the turn back. Untap. Brushland. Play Mox Diamond. Guess I'm going to pitch the Brushland. Get a factory in play. Pass the turn back. So I think this coming turn I'm going to start attacking with this factory just to start a put on a clock. Not the best clock I've ever seen, but I guess I might as well play this Surin Orb. There goes that. I think this coming turn I'm swinging with the Treetop Village. It's a good pickup. That is a good pickup. So fire off the Treetop Village. And the reason to fire off the village here is because three damage is actually takes a turn off the clock. Boomerang. Okay, okay, okay. So now we play the Treetop. I think we pass the... Oh, my opponent missed the land drop. Never mind. We're attacking. I definitely don't want them to be able to use cards in their hand. I feel like I want to play... No, I guess I maybe should have just played the library there. I just didn't want them to annul it. Obviously, it's fine if they want to counterspell it or whatever, but annulling would have been kind of rough. So here we untap. There's a Winter's Grass Pink. I want to... Rear of Revelation and End Step. Once again, considering they did miss a land drop. Okay, they do hit the land drop there. So we're going to chill. Another treetop, gonna play it out. What I don't want is to get thwarted, right? Like getting thwarted or both days would be just an absolute disaster. So here, you know, my opponent is going to discard because they're missing land drops. So I think this is fine. I still have this rare relation chilling here. And I guess I'm gonna play out the wasteland to play around potential bases. The chain of vapor, I think this is when I rare relation now. Because now they can thwart, but if they do, they miss some land drops they're going back on land drops i mean that resolved they do get an untap which is very scary and they have a second stasis yeah that's brutal them having a second stasis there is just devastating at least they don't have an actual clock here that's another land drop naturalize all right so we may be able to fight on one of my opponent's hand steps no land drop is good for me another land drop well that's it that's a big land drop right there we shot on port there is spectacular that's an extremely good land drop. So now I'm forcing the Chain of Vapor right now, which I think I'm gonna let Resolve actually. Now they can bounce like my Surin Orb or like my Box Diamond or whatever if they wanna suck a land. I don't think it's worth it for them. They play Stasis and we continue playing this waiting game. I don't know, man, like this matchups against Stasis always feels so interesting to me. <laughs> it's funny how by not playing spells. Okay, so now I'm going to Ray of Revelation the Stasis on end step, which my opponent can thwart. And if they do, it's quite bad for me. Three days, and I pay. Foil. Now we fetch, and we're going to naturalize. And I think I tap the port instead of the wasteland, because the way that this goes absolutely awry is if they have... So if they have counterspell, okay, thwart. Yeah, that's terrible for me. That's heinous. That is so very bad. Now we play this game again. At least they don't have... It's interesting that they didn't lead on thwart. I would have imagined that would have been better. Okay, that's a card. Any land that I draw now allows me to drop a seal of cleansing. Just bad into a null. We shot in port. Am I pitching a port here? I guess so. Yeah. If my opponent has a null specifically, this is kind of disastrous. Hmm, I wonder if they counter if they annul this. And then I just get to port to tap. Um actually let's just pass the turn. One and seven cards in hand. Really scary. They missed the land drop though. So now we do get to play Seal of Cleansing. If they annul, then we just we just pay. Thwart, no. Oh my god, that that's so bad. Oh, they had exactly enough islands to <laughs> to make that work too. And I pitched the port. Ugh. I mean, I guess I could draw another port. If I double click another port, I may just win. Forsaken City being pitched. That's hilarious. Ray of Revelation. Okay, so now we're looking for just lands. The kind of nice thing here is that this Soren Orb actually gives me some breathing room. So any land is great draw. Okay, here's a Mox Diamond. This buys me more time in the face of the Black Vice too. 
days. So I have three brush lands as white sources. Yeah, I just let that go. Three brush lands and another mox diamond as white sources. Okay, another wasteland. Should be turned back. So now what we have to dodge is chain of vapor. Uh, okay, so now we play the other wasteland because now we have a land to pitch to to a drawn mox diamond. Port also wins the game. Library not great. Man, what an interesting game. Super interesting game. I guess I should just yeah, I'm I'm gonna play. The, I was gonna say you should play the wins with Heave just to draw land, just to um, gain life with Surinor. Oh baby, oh baby. I'm gonna sack that now for value. They cannot keep up the stasis. That is absolutely massive. Okay, play factory. Send it back. Okay, now we're looking. Stasis is gone. We're gonna get a full on untap. Ooh baby. Naturalize is okay. Let's start with. I mean, it's very likely my opponent has some number of annuls in hand, so I don't even know if I want to play the Sylvan Library. Like, I'd rather play this after there's already um, there's already um, stasis in play. So let's start with the Terrorbore. And now my opponent has used two thwarts. Do I want to Winter's Grasp the land? I think I do, mostly just to get cards out of my hand. Also, I guess if this does resolve, it means that I can that I can play Library. Which is nice. Chain of Vapor, my Terror War. That's okay. We do get to blow up the land. Okay, cool. So now let's replay this Terror War. And I think that if I play a library here, that leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, six mana. So I guess I can't afford to do that. But this is a lethal Terror War because I just sack all my lands. So my point needs to respect this. One Boomerang and two Chains of Vapor have been used. Oh, I guess I forgot to play my land. Enchant Red or Green Creature. You control enchanted creature. Okay, that's fine. It's kind of cute, actually. A little bit of a numbo with stasis, but who am I to judge? So, end step, rare revelation, that thing. Arcane denial. So, I'm going to naturalize it then. And now, might as well port the land. I think I'm actually drawing the two cards here. So, they stack their triggers properly. I could just draw one to not take damage. Well, let's just draw one. Nah, no, let's actually draw two. So, we take one. Play Mox Diamond, discard that, play a Brush Land. Let's lead on Sylvan Library. And can we force the action here? I can suck a bunch of lands, so I guess I'm going to just swing with Factories. We can make this a 10-10 and then swing with some Factories. Yeah, I guess swing, Sewer Norb, suck the Brush Land. So now this is a Lethal Terror War. Do they have the Bounce spell? No. Whoa, man, what a match. What a crazy match we got there. That was sick. All right, looking forward to the next one. Round number two against the one and only Pole Master. Uh, this hand looks pretty good against the deck that can have that has creatures, but probably not great against another plethora of decks. City of Brass is an interesting first card to play. I was actually beaten by Pablo in the champion of champions tournament and he was playing replenish like an interesting version of replenish with having access to um main deck sabo's web i think i'm going to lead on brushland because of that he may be playing something like that but leading on brushland allows me to potentially source to plowshares something if he's not playing that deck shivan reef let's see what this is oh this is this is tom's deck Oh, this hand is really bad against Tom's deck. <laughs> uh, do we just wasteland the reef? That's pretty bad. I think I'm gonna play the factory so that I can start clocking, and I might as well play an Oath of Druids. If he plays Sabo's Web here, that is an absolute disaster. But in game one, I don't think I can really play around Sabo's Web. Also, I may just die here if he goes. Yeah, if he, he can go Altar into Tinker. And I just lose the game. Looks like what's about to happen right now. <laughs> yep. All right. Yeah, that's a that's a very strong start over there. So the way this combo works is he's going to start exiling his entire deck and start putting counters. And then with the destruction trigger on the stack, he's just going to alter of dementia to mill me for my entire deck. Uh, this is because like this is a trigger. And he can just keep responding to the trigger to make the devouring infinitely. I, I mean, as large as the CMC that he has in his deck, which is probably more than 51. So we do get to take a look at his deck list here. So we do get some value uh, from, from the combo. But yeah, we were just dead here. And he is main decking the Sabo's Web. He's probably on, on Tom's list, which main decks multiple copies of Defense Grid and, and Sabo's Web. So we get to pack it in. 
Uh, Cursed Totem is a card that uh, it's gonna be kind of rough for him to beat. All of these are great. Crumble's great. Our uh, Deviant Final Lightning Tutor also seem pretty good. And then finally Call of the Herd. I'm gonna be cutting all sorts of Plowshares. They don't do anything against uh, their combo. I don't think Ray of Revelation does anything. Oath of Druids is also another one that's that's good to cut. And we have to cut one more card. I think I'm gonna cut a Call of the Herd. I think all the other cards are better. We do have some pretty pretty good tools here for the matchup. But yeah, Pablo has been on a roll. He's been just destroying me. Uh, okay, yeah, I like this. We're gonna keep this. I'm, I also get to play around Sabo's web very nicely here. So let's hit on Brushland, which I'm probably not, I'm not probably not gonna tutor for anything here. Crystal Vein. I think I just want to play a library. And then we get to start thermal casting next turn. Double Crystal Vein. Library. Let's see what we got. So I do like the crumble. Huh. Okay, so let's put the library on top. Let's pitch this Mox Diamond. And what we get to do here, which is pretty nice, is we get to shuffle and then thermal cast the Crystal Vein and then crumble the Sky Diamond. I'm going to pitch the factory here. And I'm just going to bring my opponent to <laughs> effectively zero permanence. City of Brass. Mindstone. Let's see what we find. We'd love to find a clock. Or give you a find doesn't actually do anything here. We do have an, a shuffle. I guess we can go get Seal of Cleansing and then get back the Seal of Cleansing. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, let's pull the factory on top. And I think I'm going to pay for the port. And now we're going to Wasteland the Crystal Vein and ship the turn back. We get to Tudor on end step. Maybe for Seal of Cleansing, maybe for something else. Curse Totem is a good card to have access to as well. City of Traders. So let's Tudor. We can also go find like Sphere of Resistance or Curse Totem. I think I like Sphere. We can draw two if we want to. Ooh, nice. So yeah, I guess we're going to go Winter's Grasp into Sphere. And I guess I like all of these cards. I'm just going to pay for all of them. So play a land, Winter's Grasp, the City of Brass. He could have Factor Fiction here. Russian River. I think okay. I've gotten my value from both of these cards. He did get value from the Russian River, which is nice for him. Um, Yeah, I'm going to play Sphere. Send the turn back. And then I think we're going to play Call of the Herd. And now any land that he plays is going to cost him the City of Traders, which is some decent value. Who'd wink his own city? That's that's pretty cute. Curse Totem's not bad, but I think I'm gonna use this turn to drop a call of the herd and start pressuring. He can go land into Sabo's web, which would be kind of annoying because that puts the it that locks down the port. Tinker for Devour. Okay, he's gonna go for Devour a beat down. That's a workaround. So I guess this is kind of awkward, but I guess I lose to Fling. So he needs to use Curse Totem in response. And he's kind of gambling a little bit here. So now his dude is bigger than mine, which is a big deal. Yeah, maybe I should have maybe I should have dropped the Curse Totem. Maybe that was that was more important. Ah, oh, that's so lucky. <laughs> that's exactly as big as a devourer can get without dying. That that's really lucky. The fact that he activated just twice and he got exactly a 6-6. That's 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 truly devastating. Wow. Oh man. So I guess I have to top deck specifically Terravore. I I can port the CD on upkeep, and I need to top deck specifically Terravore so I can brick wall the Devourer. Because now I have to chomp. I do get to buy one turn by flashing back the Call of the Herd, but this is not looking great. Ugh. So I get to play Mox Diamond, I guess, for free, and we're still in the same spot. Uh, so flashback, Call of the Herd, lose to Fling, lose to a Bounce Spell as well. Man, I can't believe he made the dude exactly a 6-6. Six, six. That's, that's so devastating. Um, all right, let's go. Terrible off the top for the win. I guess it's not really the win, but like I, I get to I get to stabilize. Terrible off the top one time. Oh, he, he just has to fling. That was a crazy game. I was not going to get there anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, this this decks that Pablo has, have, have been, has been playing um, really good against the the green uh, Ponza style decks uh, just main decking Savas waves is such a big deal like it puts me in such a such a rough spot um yeah well played well played pablo and there we go that is another another loss to to pablo he has been he's been having some pretty good deck selection uh, that uh, really hoses uh, this style of deck i do think that this idea of just you know this shell is very strong but as you can see it has some pretty significant weaknesses uh, there are certain decks that simply line up very well against this strategy 
and it is asking a lot, right? So when we are building the deck in this fashion, like the cards that I cut from the red green deck where two naturalizes and I instead have store supplies, the, the decks that, that Pablo has been playing completely circumvent these axes, right? So I am stuck with this, you know, bad cards instead of the naturalizes. Sure, we also had the power class in the red green version as well, which obviously doesn't do anything as well. So um, when trying to do something like this, you're sort of metagaming. And as, as I said in the beginning, I was sort of metagaming against the mirror like this. This list uh, seems extremely well prepared for the mirror match, but we are losing some percentage points elsewhere. And we, we did see uh, something uh, like that happening this second round. Uh, the Devourer deck, by the way, I think it's absolutely fantastic. I think that Tom's list is very, very good. I feel like it's the best Devourer list that I've seen, uh, which is a deck that used to be very um, prominent in the format when I just started playing. Uh, but it has kind of fallen off for whatever reason. And I think that uh, Tom is very close to cracking the code in terms of making that deck a lot better. I think it's really good and extremely well positioned right now. So this seems like a very uh, solid interpretation of the green uh, deck. I think that you are probably winning more percentage points against the, the white meta by having access to source of pleasures or power class. And so I think that the mono green version potentially could be better in the mirror, maybe, uh, but um, it is definitely not better overall. I feel like you want to be splashing one or other color, but I do think that uh, all of these different versions have, uh, even though the base is the same, there's like a different subset of pros and cons and advantages and disadvantages, and you kind of want to be uh, thinking about that when building uh, the deck uh, so be mindful of that and um, yeah cool deck is cool so uh, that's gonna be it for me today thank you folks for watching i'll see you in the next video take care and bye bye